Mission Stitch. My name is Emmy, and this is my floss tube channel about cross stitch. Um, welcome to all everyone who has been here before, and welcome to any new viewers. I appreciate you spending some time with me. All right, we're going to launch right into um, my Mania Week Three. Um, just as a quick catch up, I am doing a working on a different project each day of May. Some of those are new starts, and some of those are whips. I started out with I think twenty whips, and so I have been adding in. Um, new starts um, with a total of 11 new starts for the 31 days of May. So let's go over what I worked on. So um, last Monday, I worked on this whip that is the Linnet Song from Modern Folk Embroidery. I'm doing this on 40 count anthracite linen with um, just DMC flosses. I'll have the exact ones in the description box below. There's my progress. So I um, added in a little bit more of the border and then added in this flower and then filled in the pot. I love the pattern in that pot. Isn't it beautiful? Jacob's patterns are so fantastic. So I feel like that was some decent progress for one day. Linnet's Song by Modern Folk Embroidery. All right, um, and the next day, Tuesday, let's see. So this was day 15, so this was day 16, was a new start by um, Queenstown Sampler, um, Harriet Cooper. I love this one. This one was released at market this year. I just think that house with those trees and the fence, it's just a little bit different kind of a sampler. Look at those flower pots. Okay, let me show you what I got done. So I, Finish. Well, let's see. I am doing this on 40 Count Molly by Grace Notes with the called for DMC. Okay, so I worked on the steps and a little bit of the house and the flower pots. Okay, now this is a 40 count and the steps are done actually. So the steps are all just one row of stitches. So let me show you this. It is actually, this looks huge, but it's actually not going to be that big. So, see, so all the steps that are right here are done. And then I've got this little bit done. And then you see there's three flower pots. So look, one, two, three. I only have two more and then those flower pots are done. So it's not going to be all that big. And the colors on it, I mean, will it be a lot of stitching? Yes, because look, I mean, it's, there's a lot of full coverage areas in there, but the colors are so fun because um, this is like a teal, a really dark teal, and then this orange corally for the house. This was just a lot of fun. Just, I love things with fun, bright colors. And so, and samplers, um, can have them not usually um they don't usually have this like green and orange coral so i just thought that was so fun so i'm loving this excited to get back to it that's the one problem with doing a different project each day is that uh, i can't keep working on it i have to stop my progress and move on to something else and i'm so excited to move on to something else but i'm so sad i have to stop my momentum that um i've got gotten going on all of these projects okay next one is a Chatelaine. This is the Taj Mahal Mandala Garden. It is stunning when it is done. Oh, sorry, all that plastic glare. There we go. That's better. Okay, so this has actually been a whip for, gosh, over 10 years. I started it so long ago and haven't touched it and haven't touched it. And so that was one of my goals in May was to touch some of these things that I haven't um, touched in a really long time. And I'm glad I'm loving it. So I didn't have a ton of stitching time on this. This was day 17, but I did start to fill in more of this corner and in here. So you can see that that has a little bit more fill in than the rest of it. The colors on this one are so pretty. This fabric is a 28 count opalescent. Um, I think it was dyed by Sugar Maple who no longer dyes fabric. I mean, that should tell you how long ago I started this. But the fabric's beautiful, this orange, yellowy, kind of sherberty colors. Um, 
but and then the pinks and the blues and the greens in there is just so pretty and this is a big project so that's just the middle you can see so right here I don't know that glare you guys I'm sorry um I'm trying <laughs> okay so I'm working on that middle so look I've got all the buildings and then all this border I mean that border is insane but so gorgeous so all right Taj Taj Mahal garden um all right next day I did just a simple one a la -di da murder of crows this was a new start and I decided I was going to do this one, the little berries. And this is where I got to. This is on a mystery linen. I think it's a 28 count. Um, and I think it's a Jobelin because it's just that super thick, soft, um, super lovely to stitch on. And so really, I mean, this won't take me too much longer to get finished either. It's another thing that drives me crazy is that when I'm working on a project and I know that it would only take me one more day to finish it and I can't work on it, it drives me crazy because I just want to get it done, right? Don't we all want to finish? There's some, there's just something very gratifying, fulfilling about having a finish. So anyway, so I just have the little berries and his little legs, a little bit more of the greenery and he'll be done. <clears throat> All right, next was another new start, Spring at Hawkrun Hollow. Love this one. It's so much prettier. My friend Jerrica has this top um, little banner done, and it is so pretty. It's so pretty. So, but I started in the middle, and I started up here on this... Um, bird one and it reads the time of singing has come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land and so when I started in the middle I could have picked any one of these four blocks and I chose this one because this might sound silly but maybe not I wanted to see some good progress and that one I knew because of the words that I would be able to get some good progress like look this one has a lot of solid stitching and here does and then that tree there would have taken a long time and so I decided to go there. Let me show you what I got done. Oh, never as much as I wanted to, but here we go. So I got the bottom um, line of words done and then this bird. I still need to fill in his little wing and tail, but I've got to finish the border. All right, and let me ask you guys. So you might see on my border, so I did half stitches. Let's see, it's kind of not focusing. Um, I did half stitches and then a full stitch every 10 so that it's easy to count. Um, and someone asked me why I did that. And it's easy to count. It goes fast. It's less to pick out. So, and it helps you see faster progress. Of course, you have to go back in and fill it all in, which can be a little frustrating because you just want to make progress. But anyways. So that's why it looks kind of spotty like that is because I just wanted to get the counting going so that I could get some good work done on this little bird. But it's cute. And this is another one that if I was able to sit down for a good day or two, I could have this block done easy. Now, the other blocks, of course not. But, you know, one block is like a finish. It is a finish. And so, again, just very fulfilling. So he's cute. Okay. And this is my first Hawk Run Hollow. And uh, this is a 40 count. This is light mocha linen, 40 count with um, DMC is what I'm using. And this um, block is so much bigger than I thought it would be on a 40 count. I mean, look, it's, I mean, that's about as big as my hand. You can see, I thought it would be maybe like this. Uh, like about, you know, that size of a block, but it is big. Not that I have a problem with that. It's fine. It's just, you know, sometimes patterns are so deceiving. You see them and you're like, okay, it's, you know, you just think, oh, it's this big in my mind. And no, look at it. <laughs> it's 
much bigger, but it's going to be really pretty. Okay, next one, I have a story for you. All right, so you might remember that I started um, Fragments in Time of 2018, and I've got all of the patterns here. Okay, so, and I was doing the border that she, she has a free border on her website if you want to stitch them all together. So that's what I did. So there's that. So I picked this up on Saturday and started working on it. And I was starting this little lock. And I started down here. And so here's that start. And as I was doing it, I realized, I'm like, I just don't love this. I do not love it. And after stitching on one thing a day for, I mean, it's been three weeks now, so 21 days, I've realized that I loved all of my projects except for this one. So I decided very quickly, I mean, I had been stitching for, you know, just five, 10 minutes, just long enough to get this little bit in. And I'm like, no, I, I don't want to waste any more time with this. It was a very quick decision. Usually I'm the kind of person that sits and ponders and thinks and well what if I don't and what if I do and I have to weigh out all of the possibilities and all of the pros and all of the cons um but this decision I made really quick and I'm like nope I don't want to now is that cute it is cute um and I did change the colors a little bit because when I pulled the called for colors they were super dark and I wanted something a little bit brighter so I pulled just a little bit shade brighter but I think I've realized that I want to do it really light and prim, really pale. So I'm going to start this over. I'm still going to keep these charts because I do want to do it, but I am going to find a different fabric. I'm going to do a different conversion with really light colors. And um, this one, I think I will turn just into a pillow. I'm probably going to have to, I don't know, do something with this border. I might have to somehow finish the border to turn it into a pillow. I don't know. Or maybe I'll pick it out or just, I don't know. We'll see. And the other thing that I decided is I really don't like the border. And so when I do these, I'm not going to do the border. I'm just going to put them all next to each other. Is it cute? Yeah, it's fine. But I just don't love it. I don't love it and I want to love it. So so I decided to pull a different project. So I pulled one that was inspired by my friend Jerrica. Um, I pulled this Modern Folk Embroidery, Kindness and Fortitude. So I have this fabric that I got, I showed you. I bought it at um, the St. George retreat I went to about a month ago. And it is from Red Thicket Fabrics. Um, this is the colorway Blue Lagoon, and this is a 40 count Verdal, and this is so soft and lovely. And when I was talking to Jerrica, she said, hey, have you ever tried silks on Verdal? And I said, no, this is my first piece of Verdal, and she said, you need to try silks. So when I decided that I didn't want to work on fragments anymore, I thought, okay, what should I pull? Because I have tons of stuff kitted up, ready to go. And I thought, this was fresh in my mind, so I thought, I'm going to do this. So I found some silks and I actually had it all kitted up with silks already. And so I started and this is my progress. So this is a um, silks for you silk. It's a like floss of the month club from August um, 2020, I think. So it's a few years old. And then this is a Gloriana and it doesn't show up very well on camera, but in person it's fine. So what I'm going to do is because I don't, I would be cutting it really close to try and do this whole thing in the silks for you. But I really love the way that tealy blue looks on this fabric. It's beautiful. So I'm going to do all these smaller motifs in that green and then all the big motifs in that blue. So I think it will be lovely. So I have that all done and I worked really hard to get that finished, but it's so pretty. Love it. I really, really like it. So there we go. All right. And then my last one, you guys have seen this before. My Mira Crystal Christmas. I started this one 
um, Thanksgiving, roughly around the time of Thanksgiving, on a trip we took out to Florida to see my daughter. And this is on a 28 count opalescent um, fabric that I dyed myself. And you have seen that I got all of the stitching done well. So what do I have left? The beading. And I got a ton of beading done, you guys. Here we go. Okay, it's so big. Put this down there so I can make sure I'm showing you. Okay, so I got all the angels beaded and then I got a little bit of the top so, and then I got that little box down there. So, okay, let me see if I can show you closer up. There's her. This is a big piece to wrangle. It's about mm, close to three feet wide. Okay, him. And then all these little swirlies and stars and, okay, the tree. Now on the tree, let me tell you, um, this is not the original um, charm. It was a, I don't know if you can see, it was just like a, it was a five point star. Oh, it's not showing very well. And then they had stitched the gold around it. Well, that star is um, discontinued. And so this is the recommended one, so I knew um, cause the pattern kind of accommodates for the shape of the star. And then it has that yellow around it. Well, I knew that this was a four point star. So I was going to have to do a little bit of fill in cause the five point star shape obviously wouldn't work. And then I thought, you know, the yellow with, um, the gold would just be weird. So what I ended up doing is I just did a circle of, um, Krynik. Okay. The base. And then I used all these petite gold beads that were left over, I think from like these dresses. Anyways, and so I really love how that turned out. I think it's really cute. Okay, so, and then there's this little guy. Oh, actually those two angels, sorry. And then that third one. So what do I have left to do on this? Cause I'm so close, you guys, really close. I just have all the swirly, lovely beads up here to do in this section. So everything else is, oh, and then I also have um, on this little angel, she is holding like a swag of beads, but you string the beads and then you just tack them down at the end so they kind of free float. So I will have to do that very, very last. But, oh, it's so close and it's so pretty. Look at that. I wish you could see how it sparkles because the fabric is sparkly. Can you see? Yeah, you can see. See all that sparkle and then all these beads. Anyways, oh, so excited to finish this one up. Okay, so <clears throat> that is it for what I worked on for Mania week three. Um, I really don't have any haul. The only thing I have is I do have this chart. This is Crowns of the Kingdom from Rosewood Manor. So you might remember if you watched my video last week that for Mother's Day, my husband um, had each of them choose a pattern or two that um, they liked to gift to me. And so um, my son, I wasn't able to show you because there was a mix up. And so it finally showed up and this was what it was. And this one's fun because it calls for petite treasure braid, so it's going to be so sparkly. And it's only four colors of petite treasure braid. I think it's it's gold, silver, copper, and black. And so I love the way that she's combined those four. And the thing about all of these is that you finish one, and it's just such a little gratifying finish to do, you know, each little separate crown motif. And there's so many different crowns, aren't they so pretty? And I love this motif up here. I think that's so beautiful, the flowers up there. Just all of these crowns are so fun. So that is what I have for you this week. Short and sweet, quick little recap on what I did. Uh, so I think that I will probably not film another floss tube 
um, next Monday in a week. I will wait until the month is over so that I can show you the rest of my mania pieces. So we've got um, about what, 10 days left in May, I guess nine. So I will show you, I will film when I'm finished. So this will, my next video will probably be June 1st, hopefully. Um, so until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful um, day that you get lots of stitchy time in because your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to stitch. Bye everyone.